Okay, so we're looking at Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 1, and I'm going to look at three key quotes. It's a very short scene. You'll have seen on the PowerPoint already that it sets an atmosphere. Essentially, its intention is to create that atmosphere. And the easiest way for me to look at these quotations is to just get them on a board and start doing some notes on them. So the first thing I always look to, and especially with Shakespeare, because these are so rare with Shakespeare, stage directions. Okay, this is not part of the dialogue. These are the directions that Shakespeare wrote in the original manuscript. Generally speaking, they remain the same. But one key thing about his stage directions is that they are very few and far between. There are not a lot of stage directions. Now, the stage directions that Shakespeare has provided are key in this case. He focuses on a heath, a wide, expansive place where there is little or no life apart from these three witches that have set about to cast their spells and chant their chants, essentially. Now, thunder and lightning is hugely important. The first thing you want to do is point out that it is stage directions. These are Shakespeare's own words, his own directions. He wasn't very controlling. If you look at some of your other plays that you might have studied, Blood Brothers, Willie Russell, for example, very specific about how he wanted everything. Shakespeare didn't leave a lot. So therefore, when we look at them, we need to take note of them. It's thunder and lightning. Now, I'm going to be very clear about this. It's not a question and answer situation. I'm going to be clear. This is an example of pathetic fallacy. So what he's doing here is he is establishing an atmosphere. He is establishing an atmosphere that continues throughout the play. This darkness, this stormy weather reflects the stormy nature of the play in, in general. Okay. Now, I don't mind how you do this. Obviously, I had a bit of a head start on you to get these quotes down. I hope my writing is clear enough for you and that you can spot what it is I'm writing. Either way, you can always pause this and watch it again. So we've got this use of pathetic fallacy through the use of the weather, which reflects the disruption in nature. And that's something else we need to write in there. In establishing an atmosphere, he's showing us that this is a stormy atmosphere in general and... It is essentially this disruption. But there's something else that's really key, and I'm going to just stand over here. When you look at thunder, when you look at lightning, you have flashes, you have essentially a distortion. Now, if you're not sure what distortion means, it basically means to make things unclear, make things unsettled so they're not exactly as they could be or should be. So what he's doing essentially is showing us that in this play Macbeth, this storm, the thunder and lightning, reflects the idea of things being obscured. I'll just write the word obscuring or hiding reality. So this flashing, this disruption, emphasizing that sense of chaos in the world, another good word to put in there. And in the middle of this chaos, who is the character that is first introduced to us? Macbeth. Now, bear in mind that we don't actually meet Macbeth himself until Act 1, Scene 3. He is referred to in the first scene by the witches. What we immediately have there is a connection between Macbeth, the character, and the evil of the witches. Now, to be honest, at this stage, we don't know an awful lot about the witches, but as a contextual piece of information, Shakespeare's audience and many audiences throughout history would have seen witches as mischief makers, at least, but definitely on the side of evil. So now we have an association, okay? So these witches, this sense of evil and chaos, out of that chaos, we have the character Macbeth. So immediately, Macbeth is associated with the witches. Okay, and that's a crucial piece of information. There's a link there. There's a link between the witches and Macbeth. 
This idea, and one thing that I want to happen from these short little videos is that you will see how to make connections between different parts of a scene, different uh, phrases, different words and different images. And if we get down to the third one that I want to look at, fair is foul and foul is fair. This is a chant that you'll definitely have come across if you've read any of the play. At the end of the day, it's such a crucial part of the witches and what they say. So what they're saying, just to be clear on that, fair, meaning good, is foul, meaning bad. So we have them chanting that that which is good is bad and that which is bad is good. Now I like that because it links right back to this distortion and obscuring that we had earlier on. So we have this theme of appearance versus reality. And what you'd be expected to do in an exam or in your studies in any piece of writing is try and make connections between these different quotations, these different sections of the scene. It's a very short scene. You only need to, and one thing I think that is important, look at how short that quote is. These are some of the first words in the play, thunder and lightning. And you could write a whole paragraph about that on its own. But then to develop it, essentially to try and emphasize or to explore further, make the links with another quotation to meet with Macbeth is enough. And fair is foul and foul is fair. So this reinforces this last bit here. Fair is foul and foul is fair. It reinforces the sense of confusion. that the witches establish. For me, it is so important that you know Act 1, Scene 1. This is only a starting point. Do use Mr. Bruff or go on Cliff's Notes or Grade Saver and just follow it up with a bit more information. Okay, that's a starting point. I hope you found it helpful.